Folks, this is one massive piece of steel right here. An eight foot, six way dozer blade by Ironcraft. Now, we'll tell you more about it, all the details and the specs. We are an Ironcraft dealer, all right? So if you go to their website and see all the different products for tractors, for front end loaders, for three point hitches, for skid steers, all that kind of stuff, well, we can order any of that stuff up and ship it right to you. Ironcraft will have certain items that are gonna be stocking items. A lot of the items are gonna be made to order, but lead times aren't that bad. But the great thing is that by shipping direct, we're helping to keep those costs lower, right? Instead of having to order a bunch of product, bring it into our warehouse, store it there, ship it back out, those are all just layers of cost that aren't adding any value to me. They're not adding any value to you. So it's kind of worth that trade-off of being able to to have the stuff at the factory made to order. You may have to wait a little bit longer because of that, but at the end of the day, you're getting the product cheaper. So Ironcraft might sound like an unfamiliar name, but it's a business that's been around for a long time. They rebranded themselves. They were known as Titan before, but there were two Titans, a good and a bad one in my opinion. Now well, maybe that's too strong. A higher quality and a less higher quality. So they decided to differentiate themselves Rebrand is Ironcraft, and I think that name suits them well. Now, they are a made in America company, all right? It doesn't mean that every single piece and part that goes into their products is coming from America. There's some times where you wanna get tines or gearboxes or shanks for box blades, that kind of thing, that are gonna be imported. It's, well, there's almost no way around it. And so, when you see products that are made in America, typically it's gonna be made in America with US and imported parts. And so that's gonna be representative of a lot of the stuff uh, from Ironcraft, including this dozer blade here. And so Titan is based down in Tennessee and the Carolinas, that area. They're building a whole new big warehouse too to try to consolidate as well um, and expand at the same time. And so a lot of good things are happening with them. You know, we had a chance to meet with the folks at Ironcraft down at the, uh, the big farm show in Louisville. I would encourage you to go to that. It was our first time down. We've been. We've been told the same thing I'm telling you. If you can, if you can go, do it. It's a lot of fun. It's, it takes really, if you want to spend time at any of the booths, it takes more than a day to go see it all. It's, well, there's a lot of people to try to navigate through and there's just a lot of cool stuff there as well. And there's other things to do in the Louisville area. But anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. And so we had a chance to meet the folks there and see a lot of the equipment uh, in person, touch it, feel it, that kind of thing. And that's kind of where we kick things off with them. And so trying to figure out what to do, we had a lot of products we wanted to showcase and decided to get a mixture of tractor products, skid steer products. We've been showing you a lot of the tractor products already, things that I'm familiar with, right? Like grapples and whatnot, but I wanted to, well, I have a need or a desire, maybe both, to use a dozer blade. I've never used them before, so we're gonna show you that in a future video. But man, it just seems like such a handy tool to have on hand. We're putting in driveway areas and there's a lot of ways to put in drives and gravel drives and, and kind of prepare for those. And this is one of those ways that I'm gonna try out. So let me tell you more about this product here and then make sure you stick around for that next video where you get to see me use it for the first time and, and how much of a fool I can make it myself. We'll start at one side and kind of work our way up towards the other. So we have our connections up here, all right? You have two hydraulic connections and an electrical connection. Two hydraulic connections. One line is sending flow this direction, the other line is sending flow back the other direction. Honestly, I don't know which one does what, but that's how it works. Then this one over here is gonna be your electrical connection. This is a 14 pin connection. We're actually only using two pins in this. Now at the time when I ordered this, um, I, well, I wasn't sure what machine I was gonna use it on, and so there's just a little pigtail here, a, a harness, I forget what you call it. Somebody remind me of what this uh, connection is called. Um, and then a whole bunch of different ends that would plug into there and I could pot, put on here depending on what kind of setup I had. There's, actually, there's only two pins that are in here. There's a, a ground and then uh, the positive, and that's all you really need. All that stuff comes back down over to here, all right? And you can see all these different hoses that go to different cylinders. You're gonna have a cylinder that does the tilt rotation, you're gonna have two cylinders, I think. Yeah, two cylinders that are gonna handle the angle, okay, left and right angle. Um, and that all kind of comes back into this solenoid block here. And that's where the electrical connection comes into play, all right? Because you notice, like we talked about, there's only the two connections here, okay? And so those go into the solenoid block. And then depending on what you do with that block determines if the flow goes to the angling function or to the tilting function. So if you don't push your little electrical control inside the, the operator station, then you're gonna be stuck with the angle, left, right angle. If you engage the little electrical function thing and then use your hydraulics that would normally angle it, it's gonna then tilt it. Probably sounds complicated, but hopefully the visual helps you understand that a little bit better. Okay, next up, you're gonna have your connection plate. This is the back plate here that the attachment starts here. 
your loader ends here. That's where they mate. And so you need a skid steer quick attach, which on a skid steer is going to be standard. Um, you know, on a big loader of some kind is, is typically going to be standard. You could have a different kind of quick attach plate, so always verify that. But skid steer quick attach is going to be typical of what you see on skid steers and when you're going to use a dozer blade like this. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So a very big beefy square tube uh, back plate here, all right, and then you have your, your skid steer uh, tabs and everything mounted on it. On top, you do have some cleats. This is a JCB teleskid. It has side entry. That's probably my favorite thing about it is the side entry. That might be the end of my list of things I like about this JCB. Most skid steers will have another arm on the other side, and you can see the D-ring down there. When this came in, this whole hose section here was routed through that D-ring, so kind of like a hose holder to kind of keep it in place and out of the way. Most of the time, your connections are gonna be over there on that side, just isn't the case with my JCB. Something you can probably see from any part of this video is the fact that there are Zerks, grease Zerks, all over this thing. I mean, it is loaded up with Zerks. I don't even know if I can count them all, but uh, there, there might be 20 or more, I'm not sure. They're on every, every pivot point that you can see. There's multiple grease Zerk points on just the back plate where it tilts, um, the ends of the cylinders, they're just everywhere, okay? So that's something that you really wanna see and what you're gonna find is higher end equipment is gonna have more of those Zerks. And the less expensive something is, typically you're on your own sometimes uh, to, to grease up those joints yourself. So it's not cut and dry, that's always the way it is, but I have found that in general to be more common with higher end equipment. Now, while I don't have specs on all of the steel that goes into this, it visually looks like this back plate here is half inch. That's kind of taking the brunt of the force. A nice big wedge or A-frame type or double A-frame here that's in the middle supporting where everything's happening, right? Where that pivot point is, is nice and beefed up. A lot of cross bracing and, and guts and set are welded in here. All right, so everything that we've talked about so far from the backside up until this plate here is doesn't change. If you have a, the 96 inch, the 84, the 72 inch, if you're getting a six way dozer blade, that's all the same. If you're gonna get a four way dozer blade that doesn't tilt, if you just want one that angles, well, you're gonna save some cost, you're gonna save a little bit of weight. You don't need the extra connection, all that kind of stuff. So it simplifies it a little bit for you too. So looking at the backside of the dozer blade itself, you'll see there are ribs that are going all along there just for the extra support as well as on the ends. And then a big old square tube going right through the middle where you probably need it the most. You will have a big matching plate, okay, to go along with the one that's kind of on the frame side of things. And so that's gonna be what slides against each other. And there's gonna be that big layer of grease in between there so you're not squeaking and and making it a rough um, rotating process. Everything will be nice and smooth through there. Now taking a look, you're gonna have two skid runners, a matching pair, this same thing on the other side as well. Big old flat shoes here, all right, to support a lot of weight and help it to not dig in if you don't want it to. And the way that they're set right now is, is flush, is even with the bottom of the blade. And as that blade wears, you can adjust with these slots, the skid runners up so that they, they stay consistent. Or if you wanna get this edge above the ground, well, you have another inch of play right here where you can lower those skin runners down and then your cutting edge is gonna be above the, the grade about an inch or so. And so then the blade itself, the front side here, I think it's worth noting the turn back, okay? This, this radius that's on the top edge, that does add strength to the steel overall versus just having it come straight up and stop. And then we're gonna, of course, have a high strength steel. This is AR405 steel uh, on the replaceable cutting edge down below here. Very thick, a half inch thick piece of steel there that's gonna, that's gonna last a long time, but if you do wear through it, just bolt a new one on. So folks, that's gonna wrap it up for us on this one. Again, Ironcraft six way dozer blade, 72, 84, 96 inches. Order them right through our website. We'll get the order submitted to the factory. When it's ready, we'll ship it right out to you. And if you wanna see how this thing works, well, we're gonna give it a go here sometime soon and well, we'll see how I do as an operator with it. If you're looking for something else for your tractor or your skid steer, check out the website. We have all sorts of tractor tools that we do ship to every single one of the lower 48 states. 
We'd love to earn your business. And on that note, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.